my friends. We're back here. We're talking about our last lesson in the chapter on centroids. Woo! We're talking today about the theorems of Pappas, 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 Goldinus, Dinus, Dinus, okay? Pappas, Goldinus. You know, these are two guys that invented this kind of same uh, theorem here, the same formula that's based on calculus, but Pappas, he came up with this about 2,000 years ago, right? And then this guy, Goldinus, came up with the same idea about 200 years ago, right? And Goldinus claims he never saw Pappas's work, and so they said, well, okay. So they hyphenated and put it, his name with his name. And Pappas is still really hacked off about the whole deal. So I've been thinking, you know, if you have like this board, if nobody touches it tomorrow, it will still be there. I'm thinking about some laws. What do you think? The newton hansen laws. No? They probably won't go for it, huh? But they got away with it. Pappas... He's hacked off about the whole deal. So anyway, there's two theorems, okay? And those two theorems, they go like this. That, that's true, by the way. So these two theorems go like this. One theorem is for surface area. I'll put an SA, okay? So for this particular weird-looking part, looks like some kind of a space capsule or something, the goal for this guy is going to be um, find the surface area, uh, and find the volume of this wacky weird shape here, okay? So the first theorem has to do with the surface area, and the second theorem, theorem has to do with the volume. So this is going to be good, right? And the theorem goes like this. Theta r bar L, and this one is theta r bar, I should put a bar over that, A, okay? So... What is theta? Okay, theta is in radians. Anytime you see the, an angle with no sine or cosine in front of it, then you automatically ought to be, that's a radian. Okay, so this guy is in radians. And then there's r bar. I know what x bar is. I know what y bar is. What in the world is r bar? They call it r bar because sometimes we'll use x bar right here, and sometimes we'll use Y bar. So if I, if I called it X bar, it's not always X bar. So they've just made it R bar, which is kind of the radius of the thing. And the radius is, these are for axial symmetric parts, okay? So axial symmetric parts. So if you go to the machine shop and you want to make an axial, axial symmetric part, which machine are you going to hop on? I'll show you an axial symmetric part. Here's one right here. This is the little, uh, my little air hockey whacker doodad, whatever these are called, right? This is an axial symmetric part because if you think about this axis here, okay, if I spin that, right, it's completely symmetric about this axis through the middle of it. Everything is symmetric about that axis, okay? That's axial symmetric. Okay, so R is the radius, and imagine this is the axis of rotation. It would be the radius from here out to whatever feature that you're looking at from, from that point. Okay, so radians, uh, it can be X bar or Y bar. In this case, if we do an X, let's say this is X here, okay? In this case, the distances are gonna be in the Y direction, so I would use Y bar, okay? And then L, L is nothing more than the length of a line, okay, line, and A is the area of a shape, okay? So, how do you do Pappas Goldinus, okay? Here's how you do it. You, number one, I always say this, the very first thing I tell my students is, number one, draw the generating shape, generating shape, okay? So here's an axis, let's say here's an axis, okay? 
there's my x-axis. What shape would I draw that when I swept it around, whoop, 360 degrees, it would make that thing? So do you see what this is? It's like a truncated cone with a nub, so the outside gets bigger, and the inside is a cone that's truncated, but it gets smaller, okay? So what shape would sweep that out, okay? I want you to push pause, and I want you to see if you could draw a shape up here that when I, when I sweep it around, it would make that thing. Ready, go. Okay, are you back? Did you figure it out? Okay, let's see if I can do this. Here's what I think would do that. I think you gotta have something that looks like this, and then it's gotta go down here, and it's gotta go up there. Okay, so if I take that shape right there, right, it's angled on the bottom, it's angled on the top, flat on each end. If I take that shape and went, and I spun it all the way around 360 degrees, which is in radians, two pi, right? Then it would sweep out that shape. Do you get it? Do you see it? Here it is right here. There, down to here, up to there, and then back to there, right? That's that shape. Okay, and that swept around, zoop, would sweep out that thing. You gotta be able to see that, okay? Because this is everything. This is everything. You gotta be able to see that. Okay, so what do I have here? I have this. I'm just gonna, I'm kind of making myself visualize what I have. I have a little skinny rectangle with two triangles on top of it. Okay, let's start off with, let's do volume first. I think volume is easiest, okay? So what is the volume of this shape? We're going to use that equation and figure this out. And here, here's how you do it. Volume is equal to, okay, the first thing is theta. So in some of these parts, they'll say, oh, this only sweeps halfway around. If it only sweeps halfway around, theta would just be pi. But in this case, it's a complete 360 degrees. So theta would be 2 pi, okay? And now I have RA, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna draw some centroids where I think the centroids of these three shapes are. There's one shape, two shape, three shape, okay? So one of them is like, is like there, one of them is like there, and one of them is like there, right? There's my, the, my three shapes. Let's see what we know here. Let's put a few dimensions on here. So from here to the inside is two millimeters. So this is two. Okay, and then this little thickness here is uh, one, isn't it? Because it's two to there, but three to there, so this is one. One. This is, these are millimeters. And then on this end, it's one. This is one. And to here is, would be um, four. Uh, minus one, that'd be three, wouldn't it? And let's see, what else do we know? Oh, then the rest of that goes right on through there, doesn't it? This is two, so this is this is one. Well, let me do this. This is one, and that's one. Okay, there you go. There you go. There's some dimensions, and of course, it's six millimeters side to side. Okay, so I'm going to make this into three shapes: shape one, shape two. Shape three, okay? So I'm gonna do this. Because what I'm gonna do is, um, I'll do Y bar for shape one times area for shape one plus Y bar for shape two plus area for shape two plus Y, oh, times, sorry. Right, it's multiplied, boop, boop. And then, um, let me make that neater. A2 plus Y3A3, right? They all have theta RA, theta RA, theta RA, but theta is the same, so I just factored the theta out, okay? No big deal. So how about these things? What is Y bar for shape number one? Okay, shape number one is here. And remember, for that's a triangle, so the area is one-third the base, but from this end, right? So if I divide that into three, the centroid is right there, okay? So it's one plus two thirds. So 
2 pi times 1.67 is that first y bar. What is the area of shape 1? Well, that's just a triangle, which is 1 half. The base is 6. The height is 1. Okay? So there's, there's, there's the first one. Plus, what's y bar for shape 2? Okay? i got to go 1, 2, and then half of this guy. So 2 and a half. So 2.5 times the area of shape 2, which is 1 by 6, which is just plain old 6, isn't it? Plus, here comes the last one, y bar for shape 3, I got to go, I got to go uh, 1, 2, 3 to get up to that triangle, and then another third the height, right? So 3 and a third, which is 3.33 times times the area of that triangle, which is the same as the area of this triangle here, right? Which is uh, uh, 3. Okay? You know, 1 half of 6 is 3 times 1, still 3, right? There you go. So that, my friends, will give me the volume uh, of that shape. Let's see what it is. Okay, so 1.67 times 3 plus 2.5 times 6 plus 3.33 uh, times 3 equals 30, and 30 times 2 pi times 2 times pi is 188.5. So the volume is equal to 188.5 cubic millimeters. Okay, boom. There's one of the things that I'm looking for. V is equal to 188.5 millimeters cubed. Okay? That's not that hard, is it? The next thing, the hardest part is just coming up with what is the generating shape, right? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the surface area, which I think is a little bit harder. So let me erase this. We'll try that one. Okay, here comes surface area. The surface area is very similar, except when you're talking about sweeping the volume out, think of that area, right? That whole entire area as it goes around, right? It's touching the inside of the part. It's touching the volume of the part. So what do we do as we rotate around just to touch the outer surface area of the part? Let's say we were going to paint this part. And we needed to know how much paint, you know, to cover however many square millimeters of, of surface area there is, right? Well, instead of area sweeping around, we're going to sweep around just the outside, the perimeter line, okay? And that perimeter line, as it goes all the way around, will touch everything on the outside of the part. So this part has four perimeter lines. So let's get rid of our area note, notes up here because now we're on the next part. We're not talking about areas anymore. We're talking about lines now. I'm going to put a dot where I think the centroid or the center of each one of these lines is. I think there's a, a center of line there, one there, one there, and one over there. Okay. So when I find Y bar, all I'm talking about is how far is it from here out to that dot. That's all I'm doing, okay? So I'm going to do the same way. Surface area is equal to, and I'm going to factor the 2 pi out, 2 pi. I have four, I have four lines. I'll call it line 1, line 2, line 3, and line 4, okay? I've got four lines. So here I go, times... Uh, y1 L1 plus Y2 L2 plus Y3 L3 plus Y4 L4. And if I do that, I'll have the outside surface area times 2 pi all the way around. And we'll know the surface area of that shape. So all we got to do is fill that out. Okay, so here we go. Surface area is equal to 2 pi times. All right. What is y bar for piece number one? So what is how far is it from here to that dot? Okay. Well, 
The difference between these two points here is one in the y direction is one. So since that's in the middle, similar triangles tells me that it's one plus a half. It's 1.5. Okay, times the length. Okay, what is the length? The length is this, one squared plus six squared square root. Do you see it? That's how long that is because, it, you know, it's a little triangle here and that is the hypotenuse of the little triangle, isn't it? Okay. Ooh, that's tricky. Not really. Plus, next one, how far is the dot number two? Okay, I gotta go one, I gotta go two, and then I got a half of this guy here to get to that dot, right? And actually, he's gonna be the same as that guy over there, isn't he? Number four, which is 2.5 times the length of the line. Well, that's easy, that's just one, okay? Shape number three plus, okay, that guy up there is one, two, three, and a half, three and a half times the length of the line. Well, it's this again, isn't it? It's the it's a square root of one squared plus six squared. And then finally, shape number four is where's that dot? Where's that dot? One, two and a half. So plus two point five times the length of that line, which is one, two, three. Okay, that's it. Now, it's calculator time. So six squared is 36 plus one more is 37. So square root of 37, how much is that? That is uh, 6.08, 6.083. This guy, 6.083, right? Okay, here we go. 1.5 times 6.083. Um, plus 2.5 plus 3.5 times 6.083 plus 2.5 times 3 is 7.5 equals 40.41. So this whole business in the bracket is 40.41, but I still have to multiply that times 2 pi, so times 2 equals times pi equals 253.93. So the surface area is equal to 253.93 millimeters squared. And that, my friends, is how you do Pappus Goldinus problems. The most important thing to do here is step one, draw the generating shape. What shape does it take to sweep out the thing that you're looking to do, okay? Muy importante, okay? Okay, gang, that wraps up the chapter nine, our, our study on centroids. It's time to move on to something else. I'll see you on the next video.